Commissioner, thanks for talking to us today. You're working on a new pan-European agreement about data and privacy. Why is it so important, do you think? Well, we do have European law, which is applied in all member states since 1995. But of course, that was a pre-internet time. And it is of utmost importance that we get the rules which are in this law also applied in real times, because people are nervous. You know that 84% of uh, people in Great Britain uh, think that their private data is misused by all kinds of companies. And we do need to give them an answer. We do need to give them the security and the confidence, because if they don't have that, then they will not give out their data anymore, and data being the bloodstream, if you want, of um, the new industry, well, it is needed, but people need to have confidence and security about the, what has happening with their data. Who is abusing their data? People have the impression that many companies are abusing their data, that companies take the data uh, for one reason, they tell, but do many other things with uh, their data which the people have not agreed to, uh, which is illegal de facto. Uh, people are also afraid that if data is stolen, they are the last to be informed that their per private data has gone away. So uh, we need to give back this confidence that A, there is an, an absolute uh, um, knowledge of the people, what is happening with their data, what is being done with their data, that they have to agree uh, what is uh, going to be done with their data. And then when the data is stolen, that the people are directly and at once informed about what has happened. But we're speaking here at the Mobile World Congress. We're surrounded by people either using or selling smartphones. If I buy a new app for my smartphone, I have to tick the boxes saying I agree to its use. How many people do you think understand when they say yes? Um, because the transparency simply is not given. And uh, we want to have transparency rules for all citizens. That citizens know what's going on, then they can decide freely. If they want it, they want it. If they don't want it, they don't want it. Uh, the only exception which we need to do to those rules are for children. For instance, uh, the uh, profiles of the children uh, must be secret by default. I think that is a security inbuilt measure without choice. But adults should need to choose. Informed choice is the rule of the game. Google tell us they've distilled their privacy arrangements from 70 different agreements down to one document. But does that go far enough? Well, we have to analyze uh, what the different companies uh, do and if it is according to European law. Uh, we are not a lawless society because we do have European law in place already now, the 1995 uh, European Directive. Uh, this directive is going to be reinforced in a double way. First, there are so many different conflicting rules in Europe, 27 and more. And there are so many rules on um, uh, reporting, which are very heavy on the companies. A lot of red tape, by the way. So I want to scrap all this. My proposal is one continent, one rule, and not this bulk of red tape. That will save the companies 2.3 billion euros a year, a huge amount of money which in a, a difficult times can be invested differently. Facebook were here yesterday announcing new deals to get into the mobile marketplace, to sell stuff through phones. Now, would you have the confidence to buy something through a Facebook page today? Any company who wants to do business in Europe will have in the future to apply European law. If this company comes from China, from India, or from the United States, or if the company comes from Europe, one continent, one rule, but for all, not as very often it is today that some companies from outside of Europe think they do not need to apply European law. That story is over. But things are moving quite quickly. Somebody could start up a new business today. You haven't got your law yet. We have a law now which unfortunately is not applied in an equal way 
uh, from companies from outside of Europe and companies from inside of Europe, which means that for our European companies there is no level uh, play. And that is very unfair competition, I do believe. Fairness is also one of the rules of the game for the future. Could it be, though, that European laws or procedures could make things more expensive for European consumers by putting up the price of goods and services? Today you have a European market with many, many rules, conflicting rules. A lot of money is spent in order to obey to those rules. And that is the 2.3 billion euros which will be saved by companies uh, once a new rule is in place. Uh, because it is a simplification tool. So Europe will be the place to make business because it will be very clear, very simple, very transparent and very cheap with one rule for all. I think very few continents can say that for them. Can I ask you about roaming charges, a project you've worked on to try and bring down the cost of using your smartphone when abroad. Now that hasn't worked, has it? We're still being charged exorbitant rates to turn on our data service. It has worked uh, perfectly well on the telephone. Uh, we had not yet started on the data transfer. So the uh, prices of uh, telephone uh, roaming, uh, phone call roaming, went down by 80 to 90 percent. I mean, that makes a huge difference. At that moment, I presented just a voluntary movement uh, for a cap on um, data uh, transmission. Uh, this question has not yet been solved. You are absolutely right. And because a lot of people are working with data, well, they get a, a bill shock uh, when they are going to a neighboring country. This needs to be solved in the interest of the industry. Because there again, if people do not have confidence on a um, service, well, they are uh, likely not to utilize the service. Look what has happened with the telephone costs. Um, the companies at that moment, when I brought down the roaming costs, were all complaining they would go bankrupt. The contrary was happening. The um, uh, circulation and the use uh, went up dramatically because people simply had confidence that they could call their friends and neighbors and family when they were abroad before they just closed their phone.